Hi everyone. Last week, I read that Dickie Betts of the Allman Brothers Band died last Thursday. Actually, it was one of my patrons, Lee Kennison, who wrote and told me. And, well, I've listened to one piece by the Allman Brothers Band, and that is a whipping post. And so I thought it was appropriate for me to do another first listen in commemoration of Dickie Betts and his contributions to the band, the music world, and so forth. So today I am going to be listening to Ramblin' Man. And I understand that that is one of his most iconic pieces. So I have a bit to read before then. Let's see what it says. Born in West Palm Beach, Florida in 1943, Betts began playing ukulele around the age of five followed by banjo and mandolin. Sounds like a good southern five-year-old, six-year-old. Although his initial role in the band was co-lead guitarist along with Duane, Betts made his mark as a writer thanks to his exuberant revival on the band's second album, Idlewind South. During the band's first few years, he and Duane took rock guitar improvisation and two-guitar dueling to new heights, as heard on the 13-minute version of In Memory of Elizabeth Reed on the band's at Fillmore East Live album from 1971. Two lead guitarists in a band. Well, they have to be willing to share, right? After Dwayne Allman's death in a motorcycle accident in 1971, Betts became the band's de facto lead guitarist and frontman, a role he wasn't always comfortable with. Featuring both Ramblin' Man and Jessica, the latter named after Betts' daughter, the band's 1973 Brothers and Sisters album crossed over into pop, Betts' 1974 solo album, Highway Call, one of the best of the Almond's offshoot projects, incorporated country, jazz, bluegrass, and gospel. So, this, this is kind of a mix of, sounds like it's going to be kind of southern rock. I don't know exactly what this piece is, but clearly he has some good, strong southern roots with country and bluegrass, gospel, jazz, in addition to the rock music. The bond between the Almonds and Jimmy Carter, whose 1976 presidential campaign they supported by way of benefit concerts, also applied to Betts personally. I remember going to a jazz concert at the White House, 1978, Betts told Rolling Stone last year. Of course I got there and I left my ID at home. But the Marines said, oh, go ahead, go in. They knew me very well and knew I wasn't going to do any harm. Jimmy was walking around the premises and someone said to me, go over and talk to him, but I didn't want to bother him. Then I went to use the men's room in the White House and as I was coming out, I ran into Jimmy with a group of people and he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dickie Betts, one of the best songwriters around today. That just floored me. Well, I wonder, was Jimmy's opinion of him so high because he really was that good? Or is it because he supported Jimmy in his campaign? Or both. Or maybe both. But anyway, it sounds like there was certainly some appreciation between the two of them. In 2017, Betts looked back at his life with no regrets, telling Rolling Stone, I've had a great life and I don't have any complaints. If I could do it again, I don't know what I could do to make it different. There are lawsuits I probably could have dealt with better, but so what? You have to get in there and fight and do the best with your amount of time. That's a good way to be able to look back on your life. Ramblin' Man became the Allman Brothers Band's first and only top 10 single, peaking at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and number 12 on the Easy Listening chart. Well, let's give it a listen.
definitely does have a bit of country flavor to it to my ears and um well it's it's partly the the quality of the voice the harmonizations uh the vocal harmonizations as well as the um guitar is that banjo or is that just a guitar echo it's sometimes hard to decide which plucked instrument it is in a recording because they can all sound quite similar especially depending on how they are handled in the recording but there is a bit of a timbre difference between the first statement and the second statement in the introduction now of course having read the introduction and recalling the other um almond brothers piece the whipping post that i that i listened to um i understand that southern rock and a little bit of this country jazz influence is kind of part of their style but at the same time if i'm looking at the text here the lyrics it suits this this set of words because it's all about well it's a southern story isn't it it's referencing georgia it's it's um all these kind of southern backwoods stories he ended up on the he, he wound up on the wrong end of a gun well okay that's that um born in the back seat of a greyhound bus rolling down highway 41 i mean all of these clearly places it in the south and because country music at least what i know of country music is such a southern iconic musical style it it fits it feels right to have this country flavor to the piece and in addition to that there's this um uh, of course the whole topic i was born a ramblin man travel movement never staying in one place how do you portray that in music what is going to be the the musical set of tools that you will use to portray that that restlessness and the rambling quality well if it were me i would probably think more harmonically and melodically just because of my way of relating to music actually here in this piece the harmony and the melody are quite static and simple but it's the percussion the rhythmic quality that gives this kind of chug 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 moving down the roadway traveling bump 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 on we go on we go chug 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 and this this feeling of we're never really settling in one place we're not really stopping uh we we move here we move there but but the but the rhythmic element of the music keeps us going and yes i know that that is a very classic stylistic feature of country music um southern rock at least the southern rock that i've listened to but still it really does fit the topic and the story here doesn't it and i was born a And in in the percussion group I'm going to include the bass and the piano. Maybe I shouldn't say percussion, I should say the rhythmic group because all three of those are really working together to create this sense of of motion and and just kind of 
constantly moving, moving, moving down the road. You hear the piano, dum dee dee dum dee dee dum dee dee, all the chords and a little bit of a, a very simple, popular jazz type um, piano playing, and then the bass, which is moving around up and down and keeping the keeping the sense of motion. Although it's not really doing much harmonically, the bass is not sitting statically on a on a single note. It it moves. You know, it's interesting. This style of music is, is really quite repetitive in many ways. And for my ears, if I were to listen to a lot of it, I suppose I would get tired of it. But I, I actually enjoyed hearing how the repetition was being employed and utilized here. And I guess I'll talk about that in a minute. But before I forget, back to this idea of the music being suitable for the topic. I'm a rambling man. Um, and its placement in the South. Those two, those two ideas, which I mentioned earlier, going on through the song, it wasn't just Georgia that was mentioned, is it? There's also New Orleans and Nashville, Tennessee, a little bit close to home. Well, that's all the more reason for there to be a bit of country flavor, isn't there? Um, and, and this rambling quality, as I was, as it was going on, I was thinking, you know, it's right for it not to have a lot of harmonic um, journeys and and explorations. It's right for it not to have even a terribly developed melodic uh, tr travel that that we hear in the melody. Why? Well, it's because 
this is not somebody who has the aim of going somewhere or or arriving somewhere. It's the it's the journey itself. It's the need to be on the move, although it's not so important where. If I'm in Nashville, I'll go to New Orleans next. If I'm in New Orleans, maybe I'll go back to Nashville or I'll go somewhere else, Memphis or something. Um, if I was born in Georgia, I might end up in Mississippi for a while and then down to Florida. I I'm not, and, and I was thinking, what is a good piece to contrast with that that also talks about um, about movement and travel? And the first one that came to mind, actually, is um, Queen's... Is it Fly Away? Fly... Spread Your Wings. Spread Your Wings. Queen's Spread Your Wings. Because that's another one, which is kind of starting at a place and then the idea of going somewhere. But it's so much more harmonically and melodically directed and focused. Why? Because in Spread Your Wings, that person has ambition and has an aim. They are, they are, they are looking forward to and focused towards a, a specific goal. Whereas here, the rambling is the goal in itself, the motion in itself. And so we don't want to feel as if the music is focusing us in one way or another. We just travel this easygoing feeling of motion, perpetual motion, and any little twists and turns that come on the way. There was a bit of um, a few statements from the drums, a few statements from the guitars along the way that kind of broke it up. Because, of course, it's not all monotonous. Um, but this person isn't really... He's neither tied down, nor is he headed somewhere in, in, in particular. And for that reason, I think that this musical style fits the topic incredibly well. Well, then that brings up the question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Um... The birds, the music, or is it just the entire um, ecosystem of music and lyrics and style that creates something like this? Regardless, it fits very well. Now, let's go back and listen to this kind of long solo at the end again. And I want to point out what I was noticing about the, the repetition that was actually very well handled. So coming out of the, the final Lord I was born in America. And this this little bit of a drum fill, drum roll is is what launches us into the feeling of okay, this is more than just a uh, sort of a filler between verses, but this is going to become something um, with its own life. It's interesting that it's the drums that makes that statement for us rather than, say, the guitar or something. Notice what's happening. There's a there's a sort of melodic figure. And that's being repeated. And we're going to hear that being used multiple ways. And what I noticed is that the musical fragment, the melodic, maybe we could call it a phrase, starts out kind of the length of a phrase, it's, it's long enough to be its own musical statement. But then as he goes on and he's repeating it, after a while, it starts to intensify. But it intensifies not by really increasing the volume or pace or, or density of instrumentation. It, it increases and builds up tension through repeating this in smaller and smaller fragments. And so 
It's a bit like saying, I'm hungry. Will you please get me some breakfast now? I'm hungry. Will you please get me some breakfast now? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Please get me some. Please get me. Please get me. Please get me. And and you hear the intensity and the, the buildup of tension, and it would drive you mad, wouldn't it? Well, fortunately in music, it doesn't drive us mad, for, probably because we're not talking about breakfast. But this is what's happening here. <laughs> And, and actually, we have, we have two guitars going on, right? The one is singing this long line, and the other one is still singing that, which becomes a sort of melodic ostinato. And, and what's happening, actually, is we have this ostinato, which is repeating in one guitar. And it's kind of in the background. We can't always focus on it because this other guitar is stepping up and saying, it's my turn to shine, and carrying on this melody. And this front guitar is the one that is now taking this long improvisatory line and picking out little bits that are going to be repeated. And, and it becomes a, a sort of a battle between the two guitars. This, this line, dueling guitars, in the introduction that I read, makes a lot of sense because at least in this, in this manifestation of it, one is holding its ground through repeating the same thing over and over again, very stubbornly and, and persistently. The other one is testing its strength and pushing back against that through his own use of a more independent and flamboyant line, we could say, which is then um, intensified and, and frenzied more and more to try to fight against this immovable, shall I say immovable, rock, which is the ostinato guitar. Well, there we have Dickie Betts of the Almond Brothers Band playing guitar and singing. And um, since this is in commemoration of him and his life and his music, well, he died of cancer after battling it for over a year. And see, I think he was a 
80 years old or something. That's a good long life. I felt like it was appropriate to just take some time and appreciate the craftsmanship in that guitar solo section. And because even a piece of music like this, which feels very simple in a way and easy, in order for it to be pleasantly listenable, there has to be uh, some way of, of shaping it, a structure, a design, an order to it. And I hope that by pointing out and noticing the way he handles the repetition, which it's fair to say um, is not anything uh, groundbreaking outside of the style, it's very much within the style, but it's very well handled and crafted. And I guess that's the, that's the word that fits most here, is craftsmanship, excellent craftsmanship within the music. And we can thank Dickie Betts for that, and um, there we have the Almond Brothers Ramden Men. I'll see you soon. <laughs>